Well, Downsview Baptist Church, good morning. We're glad that you've joined us here for our online worship service. We are glad that we have three of us here live from the church this morning, just a little bit different than we've done it for the last little while. It, it feels good, it feels right, it feels appropriate to be able to worship the King here in person and Lord willing in the coming weeks we'll all be here together. As we begin this morning, we do want to ask the Lord to turn our attention to Him and to do that through His Word. If you do have a copy of your scriptures, please turn to the first book of the Chronicles. This is, of course, a historical book. This is the passage where David, King David, not allowed to build the temple, but King David has provided or brought in all the provision that it's going to take in order for the temple to be built. And as he does so, he not only gives thanks to God, but he recognizes what sometimes we forget to recognize, that every good thing that we have comes from the hands of the Lord. Even that which we offer back to Him, even our worship this morning, is that which comes from Him, and we give it back to Him. Let me read these verses for you in 1 Chronicles 29 and verse 10. Therefore David blessed the Lord in the presence of all the assembly. And David said, Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of Israel, our Father forever and ever. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power, and the glory, and the victory, and the majesty for all that is in the heavens, and all that is in the earth is yours. Yours is a kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. Both riches and honor come from you, and you rule over all. In your hand are power and might, and in your hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. And now we thank you, our God. We praise your glorious name. Now listen, friends, verse 14. But who am I? And what is my people? That we should be able to thus offer willingly. For all things come from you, and of your own we have given to you. We recognize, brothers and sisters, that all we have comes from the hand of our King, and so we want to exalt and glorify him and ask that he might build us up in these Christ-centered truths throughout our service this morning. Let's pray together, friends. Heavenly Father, it's our great joy to be able to be here in this worship auditorium again. Just the three of us, but it's so good to have the saints gather together like this. And to do so over the online airways as it were, dear God, we praise you because everything that we have we acknowledge again this morning comes from you. It is so, dear God, because you have deemed that it be that way. You have, Heavenly Father, orchestrated all that is happening in accordance with your purpose and your plan, indeed, in accordance with your own will. And so we pray in thanksgiving this day, dear God, that you allow us to be a part of that, that you've called us to be a part of that. You have caused us to worship you in spirit and in truth. Remind us, dear God, of what David reminded the people of God of, that yours is the kingdom and the glory, and that all that we have even to provide for one another has been provided to us by your hand. Humble us with that understanding, dear God. Make it so now, we pray, throughout our service of worship, from the pulpit to the pew to the couch, Wherever we are, dear God, may Jesus Christ be praised this morning. We pray in his name. Amen. Well, as I said, we have a real special opportunity this morning that uh, my friend Grant and Bev are here with us this morning. And we are going to be singing together. And the words will be on the screen behind me. And Grant and Bev are going to join us in joining, ask you to join them in leading that together. Okay, everyone, we're glad that you've uh, 
join with us today to worship God. This is a little different than uh, what we have done. As the pastor said, the uh, words of the hymn will be on the screen and we'll sing together. You can stand up like you're in church if you want. You can sit, but uh, we want you to sing. And so our first uh, worship song is Great is Thy Faithfulness. This is something that as a, as a married couple that that have been married for a long time, we have realized day by day that God is faithful. Sometimes we're not faithful, but God is faithful every day. He's always there when we call upon him. So great is thy faithfulness. Let's sing it together. Singing now. Great is thy faithfulness. Oh God, my Father, great is singing I can't I couldn't hear you but I hope you were singing great is thy faithfulness now God is faithful but we have to take one day at a time and but as we serve the Lord together and as we worship him as we live as we do it or our jobs we uh, we we have every day is a gift from the Lord and we need to commit each day to the Lord so we're gonna sing about that day by day and through each passing moment. Let's sing this together to the praise of God. Day by day, and with each passing moment, strength I find to meet my trials here, trusting in my Father's wise. 
Christ bestowed torment I've no cause for worry or for fear he whose heart is kind beyond all measure give unto each day what he deems best lovingly is part of pain and pleasure mingling toil special mercy for each hour. All my cares he fain would bear and cheer me. He whose name is Counselor and Power. The protection of his child and treasure is the charge that on himself he laid as thy days thy strength shall be in measure this the pledge to me he made help me then in every tribulation so to trust Thy promises, O Lord, that it knows not facing sweet Galatian, offered me within thy holy word. Help me, Lord, when toil and trouble meeting, ere to take as from a father's hand. One by one, the days, the moments fleeting, till with Christ the Lord I stand. Thank you, that's great singing. Well, we're moving around a little bit here in the church this morning, but boy, it is sure a blessing to be able to do this together. A few announcements for our church family. As you know, we are still seeking to live by faith in light of this COVID-19, and yet we are very grateful that the numbers of infections and deaths and hospitalizations continue to go down, plummeting in some areas of our province and our country, and our vaccination numbers certainly continue to move forward and upward. And so we want to encourage you to trust our government's health authorities, at least trust the Lord that has put them there, and seems to be working through these means of grace very clearly these days, the way we can love one another used to be by wearing these masks, by keeping our distance, which we're still doing. But nevertheless, these vaccines are clearly the way you and I are going to be loving our neighbor. And frankly, the way that we can move beyond online services or restricted numbers and move to the point where we were over almost a year and a half ago. Until then, for these next few weeks at least, we will be here online at 11 o'clock each morning, each Sunday morning at least, uh, each morning. You want to come every week, Grant? You want to come every day? Yeah. <laughs> we would love that. <laughs> but Sunday mornings at 11 o'clock, the same place that you're watching this now, either on Facebook Live, it will be broadcast from here, or there'll be a link here, which will take you directly over to our YouTube channel. And as you know, most of you know by now that the best way to find us is just go to downsbaptistchurch.com. This morning, some of you may have found your way here that direction already by just clicking on the Sunday morning stream and it's brought you right to the Facebook page live or it will bring you to the Facebook page and we say there'll be a link there for you. Again, we are really looking forward if our latest government is uh, government reports are to be believed that the stay-at-home order will not be extended past the 2nd of June, which does mean, if that's true, that we'll be able to easily have our outdoor worship services without any limits on the numbers on the 20th of June here. That's our plan, to be outdoors, to be here at 10 o'clock in the morning 
on Father's Day. Now, some of you will remember last year when we were able to do that. It was just a wonderful time. We have the blessed opportunity to be outside here again. Appreciate Andrea and Larnie and Minda pulling together some music that they'll be able to be here on Father's Day with us. You know, it was just, it was just so good. For us to be able to gather outside there, to see a number of our folks together, frankly to see the church just operating as the church is designed to do, to see the smiles and the laughs. Now, even when we're outside, we're not going to be able to uh, be close together. We'll still have to physically distance. We don't need masks, but we will need to be smart. And so just understand that over the first few weeks as we try to do that. But that is our plan. And Lord willing, that will come to pass. I do have a picture on there of the Hernandez family. And before we sing again, we're going to have a word of prayer. Because uh, both Chester and Ariane, and we've been in contact regularly throughout the week. And I so appreciate their kindness and keeping us up to date, even in the midst of some of their pain. But we thought last week that Emil, who's been in the hospital almost seven weeks now, on a respirator, was... Well, frankly, they weren't sure he was going to make it. And just this past week, Ariane called me. Chester was on the phone with tears saying the doctor has said, we don't know what the treatment has helped, but he's getting better. And hallelujah, we all prayed at the deacons meeting on Thursday night with tears in our eyes just saying, we know what treatment helped. Our great physician in heaven has indeed been pleased to give a degree of healing or at least a stay for a time of who knows what's going to happen. Now, he's not out of the woods totally yet, but he is so much better than they thought he was. And so thank you on their behalf for praying for them. As you know, Chester has recovered and grandma's been home for a few weeks now and seems the rest of the family has avoided much uh, in the way of infection. And so we praise God for our church family that prays and that sees the Lord's hand of grace. Again, he doesn't owe us showing the evidence of his grace, but how kind of him to do so. So would you join me in a word of thanksgiving? Father in heaven, we do praise you for the opportunity again that we've had to reflect on your day-by-day -day care of each one of us. We praise you, Heavenly Father, that indeed what we receive, we are to receive it as from a Father's hand not from the executioner's axe, but often from the physician's scalpel. And so we pray, dear God, in thanksgiving for the way you are continuing to cut away the old man, the old woman, as it were, and that you are continuing to renew us with these new spiritual people that we are indeed, that have hearts that beat for you, no longer hearts of flesh, but hearts that beat for you, dear God. We pray in thanksgiving for all you're doing in our church family, for the financial provision you have given us, for the fellowship and encouragement, for those who are caring for the grounds and for the building. And we pray in particular this day, dear God, for your kindness in honoring the prayers of your people, honoring indeed the one who has brought our prayers to the throne of grace, the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who is our great high priest, we have asked that he would bring our petitions before the throne and that you'd show mercy on the Hernandez family. And you've done so. And you've done so again and again and again. Thank you especially for Emil's recovery. Pray that it would continue, dear God. We do not want to assume or presume upon you, but we come to express our gratitude to you. We do that, dear God, in light of knowing there are many others who are struggling physically in our congregation. Continue to pray for Doreen and for Angie, for those, dear God, who are suffering from even the effects of being isolated, the mental health aspects of feeling lonely, of the changes in our lives, the, the stress that betrays itself sometimes in our shortness of temper, in our, our lack of patience, in our discouragement sometimes, dear God, we pray for those among us who are frontline workers and teachers, those, dear God, who are seeking to continue to help, who cannot just stay home, but continue to seek and help in the midst of this pandemic. We praise you, Heavenly Father, for answering months and months and months of prayers that you would bring a vaccine, that you would use it as a means of your grace to bring us through this time. As we look forward to Father's Day and gathering together outside for the summer months, we bless your name for that beautiful truth that you continue to do what you will to bring honor to your name and encouragement to your own. So hear our prayer, Heavenly Father, even as we continue to pray as we sing in Christ's name. Amen.
Okay, now it's time to sing again. We sang about God's faithfulness. We said day by day. And this next uh, hymn or song we're going to sing is about Christ. In Christ alone, you know. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. We're, we're cre recreated. We're born again. It's, uh, it's amazing. It's God. It's nothing to do with us. And so in Christ alone, my hope is found. Let's really sing it together from our hearts. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength my song this cornerstone this solid ground firm through the fiercest drought and storm what heights of love what depths of peace when fears are still when striving cease my comforter my all in all here in the love of Christ I stand in Christ alone who took on flesh fullness of God in helpless babe this gift of love and righteousness scorned by the ones he came to save till on that cross as Jesus died the wrath of God was satisfied For every sin on Him was laid Here in the death of Christ I live There in the ground His body lay Light of the world by darkness slain Then bursting forth glorious day up from the grave he rose again and as he stands in victory since curse has lost its grip on me for I am his and he is mine but with the precious blood of Christ no guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man could ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home here in the power of Christ I stand thank you that's a I, it fills me up when we when we sing a song like that because it's all of Christ and nothing of me he's the one that saves us and keeps us and so we're so glad to sing about him and praise him for his faithfulness, that he's with us day by day, and that it's all of Christ and nothing of me. Come have your seats. Well, we're doing something just a little different here this morning, folks. And uh, Grant and Bev are gracious enough, excuse me, gracious enough to uh, let them be my sermon introduction. <laughs> we have been speaking about Christ-centered marriages for the last number of weeks in our Sunday morning service and as well as many people around our church family already. And we thought, what a great way to see the testimony of God's grace in some of our own people. And so in some ways, we're talking this morning about marriage survival. <laughs> really, it's, 
you think through the number of years we've all been married together and you just think, how'd you do it? How, how in the world do we survive in and through these marriages when we were all married to sinners? And so is he. <laughs> Everyone is married to someone who has been sinning or who has sinned and, and there's struggles and challenges in it. And so I asked ben, Bev and Grant if they would come and be willing to just share as they easily reflect on the faithfulness of our King. So a couple of easy questions to ask you guys just to begin. How long have the two of you actually known of the other? I'll let my wife go first. How, how long have you known Grant, Bev? Well, we married um, 61. 62 years in August. 62 years. Yes. So how long did you know him before you got married? Uh, well, we, I knew him not well, but I, I knew of him more than knew him. For five minutes or five years? Oh. How long did you know him? Well, I guess a year maybe. A year or so before yeah. you asked? Yeah, she, uh, she uh, used to phone and all that. She worked with FBI, YPA, and she was, uh, when we had rallies and that, she used to call the presidents of all the young people. Right. So she would, uh, she was at Keelsdale Baptist and I was at Grace Baptist, so she okay. would call uh, Grace, and she had my phone number, and she would call and say about the rally and invite us to go as the young people's group. And so that's uh, when I first heard her voice, I didn't know her, but later on, uh, Things happened and we, we met, and here we are, 62 years almost later. And then you clip that on your tie. We you give, give this one to bed after. Okay. We're just going to make Actually, sure that everybody can hear me, but I want to make sure they can hear you. So I'm going to put this. Oh, okay. Just clip it on your lapel. Okay. Sorry, folks, we're making this up as we go along here, but that's why it's a church family, not a runaway play. <laughs> Actually, the way we really got to know each other better, he, he came to play baseball for our, our church had a baseball team. Well, you can't do any better than a baseball player. <laughs> My Pam was a provincial softball champion in Manitoba. So these baseball players are good catchers, Beth. I agree. Well done. Well, my dad was a coach of the team. Oh, okay. And my brothers and my brother-in-law all played on the team, and then he came to pitch. Ah. <laughs> what did you say? Well, when I was there for a while, I, uh, her, uh, her Bev's sister's uh, husband was first base. Yeah. And so we, we were playing, uh, you know, and one, one time after the game, I went to Dave and said to him, I, uh, I see the, the coach has a nice-looking daughter. <laughs> is she uh, is she interested in anybody? And he said, "No, the field is open." Oh, the field <laughs> is open. He's got a baseball analogy and everything. Well done. That's good. <laughs> so you knew each other and you met at the baseball team. But how long until you knew you wanted to be married? Oh my goodness. Well, uh, I think Bev's already said that. Uh, I don't know whether we talked to you before, but yeah. Uh, Bev used to teach uh, child evangelism at a TB hospital on Young Street and uh, she taught the girls and the fellow that taught the, the, the boys uh, all of a sudden stopped and so she, uh, she knew that I might be interested so she called me and asked if I would be interested and guess what, I was. <laughs> <laughs> We said he, he was willing to minister to the boys to get the girls. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So that, uh, that was a, a relationship that's begun. And, and then one time after we had the boys and girls teaching, teaching them, I said, would you like to go miniature golfing? Ah. So we went miniature golfing. She had high heels on and all that. that but was, well, we were on the way home from, oh. uh, from teaching at the hospital. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Deb, were you a believer when you met Grant? Oh yes. And were you a believer all that ready? Right yeah, there? this this is the the, the sole, sole substance of our marriage is that you know I would not marry someone that really 
I mean, it didn't know the, the, the Lord and it wasn't showing evidence of, uh, of uh, walking with him. And she, she was the same way. She grew up in a, you know, in a family of six. I was an only child, you know, so okay. it was quite different in my life. But uh, it's, uh, I, 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 uh, I just knew when I first uh, took her out that this is probably the girl that I want to marry. And that's wow. the way it worked. The Lord was so gracious to bring us together like that. Ben, without it, it's not polite to ask a lady her age, but tell me what year you were married. 1959. I was 22. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> you can do the math. And I was 24. 1959. 1959. That's the best year of my life. I wonder what I was doing in 1959. I think I was a twinkle in my daddy's eyes, yeah. I'd say. <laughs> How many years is that that you've been married then? Help us with the math. Yeah, th this year, uh, in August the 29th, we'll be married 62 years. Wow. Yeah, 62 I, years. We're ancient. I mean, uh, but, you know, I, I, I tell my wife every day that I love her because I know, you know, when you've been married 62 years or 61, then you know each other. You know, when she looks at you a certain way, she knows what she, you know what she's thinking. Yeah, yeah. yeah you, you've been there fast. I'm 62 to know that. That's right. I've heard it a little bit. <laughs> How did you do it? How do you stay together, faithful and pure before the Lord? How do you do that for 62 years? Is there a Bible verse that might touch on that? Or a truth in the scripture that speaks to how you've been able to be faithful to each other? She wants me to say things because I don't know what, you know, that I would, we were talking about before the service, you know, first, you know, it's, it's Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not in your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. This marriage is nothing about Bev or Grant, it's about the Lord mm -hmm. and he is sovereign and he's the one that brought us together and, uh, you know, we, we make mistakes and uh, our marriage is not perfect yeah. but we know the lord and when we do you know we do have differences of opinion we've been in our devotions we've been reading about you know in first corinthians about and that's all about marriage and that too and you know uh really uh it's god it's yeah. god you know it's christ in us it's uh it, this is not about how good we are it's about how good god right. who is the one that's been good to us it's the Lord. Sure. Yeah, the Lord has saved us. I was only nine years old when I went to, a, a, they call it a, a boys and girls meeting in the church. My, my guy I grew up with, Mike Lee, said they're having a meeting over at Grace Baptist Church. And so he, 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 he said, you want to go? And I said, okay. And that's when I first heard the gospel. Mm -hmm. And that day when I first heard the gospel, something happened in my life. The first time. Yes. Oh, well, I, I, I mean, I've been going to church and uh, with my mother, but uh, my, my, my father was, was away most of his, he was in, uh, in construction and he was building highways. So he would be home at Christmas and, right. and uh, Easter and that, but he was away a lot of the times. But uh, I, uh, I just, something happened I, and I got a new look on life. I, I, it's hard so to explain. How, how does that verse point to that new look on life. How does, how come we want to lean on our own understanding, Bev? What, why does the Bible have to tell us, don't lean on your own understanding? Why does the Bible have to tell us that? Because the Lord knows how self-centered we are. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. self-centeredness is not a path to a happy marriage. No, that's right. Selfishness ruins really marriage. Is. If you're selfish, when, you know, when, especially when you're an only child and you, you know, you've always had your own way, sure. but then when you get married, it's, it's, it's two. And, but, you know, it, it says, you know, we become one flesh and we, we're, and, and so we, we have to listen to each other and we have to, not that we're perfect, we don't have differences. I, I was going to say before about it, it's unity is, is not uniformity. We're not all the right. same. Yep. And, uh, and so, when we get married, then when the adjustments have to make, and if you don't love your wife as Christ loved the church, then you you want you want your own way. But yeah. uh, Bev was a, was a, 
not not hard to love you know because she uh, <laughs> she knew the word of god and we I, I learned things from her when we first got married like tithing and things like that that i didn't do before but when we got married she said this is what we have done before in our family and i said well that's that's fine we'll uh, yeah. we'll tithe i mean and god's been so gracious because you were certain that that's what the scripture said that <laughs> not just because it was a good idea oh goodness or the way no. my family did it or... no and i felt unless we did it we weren't being obedient right mm -hmm. right and so obedience is tied to what the scripture tells us right and right. you mm -hmm. sought to, to put that through, right? Yeah. So, <clears throat> because marriages are not perfect, how has the truth of acknowledge him in all your ways and he will make your path straight, how does that help you stay together? You're, you're together because of that, but how does that, truth, how does that truth keep you together? Or how has it helped you stay together? We, we uh, you know, when I was working... Uh, I would get up early and go to work, and Bev would be left with the children. She would pray with them and read uh, read it before bed, read scripture. But when when we uh, when I was able to be retired, I've been retired since '97, yeah. uh, 24 years this May, as, and uh, so we 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 have devotions every morning. Sometimes we miss and we have to get caught up, but <laughs> we uh, we have devotions and we pray together and. Uh, she prays one day and I pray the next. And the scripture is what brings us together even more. When we, and we, 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 we read a passage and we say, man, I didn't see that before. Right. God is, I mean, I, we're, I'm, we're in our 80s, but God is still revealing stuff to us. So I've changed over the years. I've lost hair and all this other stuff. But, <laughs> but I am. Uh, the truth of it is that the scriptures have helped you stay together because you sought to live up what you're continually yeah. That's looking right. at. That's that right. Right? We haven't arrived yet, brother. God's <laughs> <laughs> well, not finished with this. That's right. Yeah, that's right. But this this last while, we've done so much reminiscing. I, <laughs> and all of it. At the more the more you talk about it, looking back on the years, yeah. the more you see the Lord's hand. On right from the time we met, Excellent. till we married, yeah. till we had children everything right. you could just you know looking back is easy it's looking ahead that's hard <laughs> sure. but looking back it's not hard really to see how the lord had it's, his hand it's, on it's both not of bev us. it's not me it's the lord mm -hmm. the lord is uh, is the one that's changing us still changing us yeah. and uh but he, he's the one that gives us uh what we need you know but the, he is changing you too it's not as if it has nothing to do with Bev and Grant. There's no credit to Bev and Grant. But you're the ones that he's doing this in yeah. your lives in particular, right? Differently than my marriage and other marriages of people that are listening to this, right? And so is there, a, is there a even broader aspects of God's character, God's actions? How has God's person and actions helped you remain faithful to each other over the years? What is it about God that's kept you together? We, we're changing, but God doesn't change. He's so, the same yesterday, today, and forever. So okay. and we, we change. We have our ups and downs. You know, we, yesterday we went downstairs and there was water on the floor. And we all got up, uptight and we were vacuuming. And, and <laughs> this morning God was good. It, it was dry I'll again. Bet, I'll bet someone was more uptight than another. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen them here at the church when there's water on there. <laughs> oh dear. So, with respect to God caring for you and changing you, how have you become more like Jesus because you're married? More like Christ because and since you've been married. How, how has Grant helped you become more like Jesus in your marriage? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. I know, like, you no, know, the Bible talks about uh, the church as the bride of Christ. Okay. Yeah. So you know, when uh, you know, when we, I we I said this morning to her, you know, when we when we first got married, we were green as grass. You know, yeah. we didn't know anything, sure. <laughs> but together we grew in the Lord. <laughs> we, uh, you know, we we. What? How are you different now 
more like Christ than you were when you got married? Because you're married. Well, we, we have a, a better knowledge of How Scripture. Are you? Oh, me. How are you different? I'm different because God is changing me as I read His Word. As, in and what he, ways are you different? Well, I, I... used to be like this, but now because I'm married to them, I'm like that. How are you different? Well, my, my desires have changed. The guys at work used to say, uh, you know, you know, why don't you drink? Or why don't you... I said... I'm not saying my, I'm better than you. Yeah. I just said that something's happened in my life and God has changed my desires and I, I just would rather not do some of the things that you do. I'm not condemning you. Mm -hmm. And so I said, God's changing me. God's making me uh, different. And well, God's making you different. And how are you different since you've been married, Beth? How has God changed you? Well, in any marriage, um, I was going to say you're on your own. You're never really on your own sure. when you have the Lord. But but when once you're married, yeah. life changes. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, and so, you know, it's not always what I want. You know, I he's, he's my boss. <laughs> <laughs> You know, this is being recorded. He's going to play this back to you. <laughs> she said, she's always told me, I'm the boss and she's bossy. Oh, there you go. Pam <laughs> yeah. and I have a, a, a sign that it says, rules the roost on the guy. And then the lady has a sign with it points over and says, rules the rooster. So sometimes that's <laughs> the case, right? Yeah. What's one of your favorite things about Grant? Oh, his love for the Lord and his love for the Word. Okay. I'm serious. I, it's not just because we're here yeah. saying these things, but that's what I really appreciate about him. Have always, he's he loves the Word. Right. What is one of your favorite things about that? Don't have to. Well, don't have to over spiritualize it either. If you don't want to just. Talk you know, when, when 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 I you know as a young person growing up. When I was saved, the girl that I wanted to marry was uh, was need one that we. I said, you know, if, if when we have a family, we want them to to come to know Christ. That's our main goal as parents. And so, well, Bev Bev is the one to me in our family. When I left and went to work, she she spent more time with the kids than I did, and she she would pray with them before uh, before they went to school, and. Uh, you know, she used to and on the veranda, and the, and the kids that went to school with David and yeah. and 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 uh, our family, they 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 go oh, don't 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 pray until we get here. They're running up the street. You know. So I mean, we're not here to blow ourselves up. We're we're here to say how God is is implement has changed us. I mean, it's we're not here to blow our own horn. We know that That's we're here that. we're here to talk about the Lord. The Lord is able to change things. Yeah. And uh, uh, if you had to give a younger couple, apart from keeping the Lord at the center of your marriage, which clearly you testified to, if you had to give an advice to a younger couple, what would you tell them to keep in mind to be steadfast and pure and loving the Lord and faithful for 62 years themselves? What would you tell them to do, Ben? Oh, boy. Well, put the Lord first, mainly. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And how, how should they do that? How should they put the Lord first? Bring things to the Lord in prayer. Okay. Mm -hmm. Continually, faithfully, prayerful. Yeah. Um, and not just a habitual prayer, you know, not just right. I, I, it's time to pray today because I prayed yesterday. Yeah. This is, I mean, this could be any time of day or night. You know, Very and yeah. you Lord help me, place? Lord help him. Yeah, you know. <laughs> oh yeah, right. Lord help me, help him. Yeah. That's right. Prayer, prayer, and reading the Bible is you know together. Yeah. Like, I know guys I work with. They they were married, but you know they went off on their own. And but I I I enjoy being with my wife. So she, enjoying your time together. Your yeah, time. we we we. Uh, we enjoy, I go shopping with us. You go shopping with your wife? Yeah, I said, I love going shopping with my wife. So, I mean, oh, you're henpecked. 
you know, that was a, it's a, I don't know. I just know that uh, God is real. His Holy Spirit, I've been born again. I've changed. I didn't change myself. God changed me. Right. It's not something that I did that made me better. It's something that God did. Right. It's God. He's working. He has begun a good work in me, you know, and he'll perform it till the day of Christ. So we're not here to boast. We're here to say God is faithful mm -hmm. and uh, we're just we're just his children. Yeah. And he uh, he knows how to deal with us when we step out of line, you know, and uh, he I mean, he, he, he just uh, whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. It says yeah. in the Bible, we all these verses come to mind when you're, you know, when you're married and you read a verse oh yeah that's that we need that mm -hmm. when our kids came you know oh you know kids can be challenging but you know our kids you know i, I we we said this often bev jane comes and says some of the kids she's dealing with and but you know we our kids they weren't angels right. but you know they they were obedient yeah and but uh, you're attributing all of that to the lord yeah not just in your lives individually but in your lives collectively as a, as a married couple, right? Yeah. And so to tell young people to keep the Lord first in prayer and in reading the word, but you're saying doing it together. Yeah, together. That together yeah. And enjoying your lives together, enjoying yeah. your lives in the, in the ordinary. We're going to get groceries. Yeah. Love to do that together, right? <laughs> I mean, that's, that's real life, isn't it? Right? When you're, yeah. when you're, you're doing that's that. Right. There's something of how Christ is with us in the ordinary. Yeah. Christ is with us in our every day. Uh, Christ is with us when it's not a special occasion, but we're glad to, to be with them. Yeah. So. I couldn't help thinking, you know, um, as much as we spent time in prayer with our kids and teaching them, I'm just so thankful for the church. Mm -hmm. They had Sunday school. They had Pioneer Girls. They had Christian Service Brigade. And then as they got older, they had young people's, yeah. you know, and all those things. Well, even in the summer, we had day camp at yeah. one point. Yeah. We had a school, we had a bus. The church yeah. had a bus. Yeah. Yeah. And they used to fill the bus with kids and we'd go for a week or two, we'd go to a camp. Every day, it was a day camp. We'd yeah. go, we'd day go camp. on the bus to a, a, a provincial park mm -hmm. and uh, do things, yeah. And all, all those things contributed to our kids, yeah, you know, like we could take all the credit, but it's not ours. Yeah, no, that's great. <laughs> you know, the Lord's that's been great. so good to us in yeah. every way. That's a good note to, to finish on. Grant, would you just offer a prayer of thanksgiving yeah. for your marriage and, his, and an invocation for the marriages that are listening that God would help them to yeah. be faithful sure. as well? Please go ahead. Our Father, we thank Thee for marriage. We realize in ourselves that we're nothing but we thank thee that uh, when we know Jesus Christ as Savior and we come together, your word says, be not e unequally yoked. And yet, our Father, we know sometimes people do get married that one is saved and the other isn't. But we know that sometimes these things can turn up, that uh, the person does come to Christ. But uh, we, we just thank you, our Father, for knowing uh, a wife or a husband that knows the Lord and being joined together as one. We thank thee, our Father. We pray for those uh, that are listening this morning, our Father, that uh, are contemplating marriage. We look back over when, when I was 24 and Bev was 22 and how you brought us together. We know that uh, marriage is a very serious thing. It's not something that, it's a covenant that we make with each other and till death us do part, in sickness and in health, till death us do part. So we, we, we thank thee, our Father, that we can pray for each other and we do pray for those that are listening as they fall in love and as they uh, proceed to be married, that you'll help them to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things that, you know, that we worry about. They'll all come our way when God allows them to, to do, uh, to come our way. So, oh, we, we praise and worship you now and thank you for being able to tell people that we, we are nothing but in Christ we are more than conquerors. We're overcomers. It's not us. It's Christ in us. And so we thank thee, our Father, for prayer, for your word. Thank you for Pastor Peter and what he means to us as a pastor to lead us as we uh, just uh, live for Christ and serve him together at church. We thank thee in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
guys want to have your seats. We'll be right back together in a moment here, folks. That's okay. That's okay for now. You can leave them there, Bev. Yeah. That's me there. Well, we're going to spend a few minutes in the Word of God or at least continue to spend some time in the Word of God. You can have a seat down front. Yeah, okay. Thanks, Bev. I could just listen all day <laughs> to how people talk about the Lord and about His faithfulness to their lives and their marriages. And the fact is, Downsview Church family, that as Bev and Grant have said all week as I've had to twist their arm a little bit to be willing to do this because they don't want it to be about themselves, but I so appreciate them being willing to do that. The fact is that there are plenty of couples, and I've got a few plans going in my mind already. There could be lots of people we have in these seats, and perhaps we can do some more of this uh, with other ch uh, members of our church family as well over the coming months. But one of the things that strikes me is that whenever we consider marriage, we know that there is a devastating problem in the midst of every single marriage. There is a single reason why every marriage struggles, and there is a singular reason why every marriage, if it does, is destroyed and people walk away from each other. And that, of course, is those three little letters, S-I-N, it's sin. So if you have your Bibles, let's look at the book of Romans chapter eight for a minute. I'm just going to make a few adjustments to our plan here. But look at Romans chapter 8, if you would, verse 1. Romans chapter 8 is, of course, the great eight, people call it. the uh, Perhaps one of the finest, certainly one of, if not the finest chapter in the Bible. Romans is a book that is detailing in theological, well, precision, about who God is and, and what he has done. And so when we get to chapter 8, we get this very good news in the first verse that there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because, or for, the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. For, or because, the Apostle Paul anticipates our questions, why is that, Paul? For, God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. And by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemns sin. He condemns sin in the flesh. In order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, we who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. Because for to set the mind on the flesh is death. But to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. And so when we think of our efforts to want our marriages to be conformed to this picture, the way Christ loves his church, the way the church loves Christ, that's what marriage is intended to display. That's why God has given marriage in this world. And just this past, well, I say this past fall, I realize it's the fall previous, almost more than a year and a half ago now, we started a small marriage group. And three young couples at our church, which Pam and I have done a number of times, and 
Next to preaching the word, marriage ministry is what I love the most. And one of the most things, most enjoyable things about preaching is to preach about marriage. I just love it because this is different than any other relationship in the world, any other kind of calling on the planet. Marriage is designed to reflect Christ's love for his bride and the bride's love for her bridegroom. Now, I know some of you are watching and listening and you're not married. And sometimes the world, the flesh and the devil can get in there and say, well, I'm not married. We'll just shut her down for this morning. Without putting too fine a point on it, that is a horrible attitude. It is not the kind of attitude that God gives people who've been born again, who've been given new hearts that beat for him. It is not the kind of attitude that God provides or causes in people who are part of the body of Christ who must want what is best for everyone. In fact, considering others better than ourselves means that even if we're not married, that could be because of the pain of death or it could be because of the pain of divorce. And whether it's by death or by decision, there is nevertheless a calling on the people of God at Downsview Baptist Church to desire that all marriages here would be reflective of Christ's love for his own. And it's very easy to see the kind of counsel that God gives us about battling with sin in our marriage is the kind of counsel he gives any kind of relationship within the church. So whether we are married or not, listening today, there is an application. And yet, at the same time, we are unapologetic this morning about calling on a church family to pray for and to model for each other the kind of marriages that God would have for us. That we would find our joy where it is only to be found in living the way we've been designed. And when we have found ourselves married, that means God has designed us to be married and therefore he has called us to live out our lives according to that design. And I will tell you, brothers and sisters, that there is a fundamental challenge in our marriages, which is the fundamental challenge of our Christian life. The same fundamental challenge to living Christian lives is precisely the same fundamental challenge in our Christian marriages. And it is this. I want what I want. <laughs> I want it when I want it. I want it to the degree that I want it. I want it the way I want it. And if I don't get it that way, it's a shame to say, but I will sin to get it. That's what happens in marriages. That's what happens in all kinds of relationships. I will sin to get what I want. And the reason for that is this. I want, when I think of my Christian life, way too often I think of it as a relationship with Jesus that is based on him giving me and doing for me what I want him to do. And I want a relationship with my spouse that's on the same basis. I want her to do for me and to give to me what I want her to do and to give to me precisely the way I want it. And when I don't, I get angry at Jesus and I get angry at my spouse and I sin against Jesus by demanding things be different. And I can sin in the same shameful way against my spouse. The fundamental problem with our marriages is that we will always be dealing with sin because we are married to sinners. One another always married to one who will struggle with sin. And so since the fundamental problem of our marriages is our fundamental problem of our Christian lives, the fundamental solution is the same. The fundamental solution is that I must seek to live in a submissive relationship to Jesus based on him giving me what he says and what he knows is right, in fact, is best for me. See, I want to live in a relationship with Jesus where I tell him what to do and what is best. A Christian life is living in submission to Jesus, causing, walking and watching him causing me and causing to come into my life what is best for me. And therefore, I must seek to live in a relationship with my spouse that is based on what Jesus says and knows is best for both of us. Now, Bevan Grant have testified to some of that today. 
Pam and I can certainly testify to some of that. The young married couples that we had in our group can certainly testify to that. And most married couples listening, when we're honest with ourselves, can recognize that the fundamental challenge I have in my marriage is the fundamental relationship or fundamental challenge to relationship that I have in this world. And that is that I'm a sinner who wants what he wants. My prayers can be demands. My Bible reading can just be looking for a proof text to tell me what I already know that I already want to do. My involvement in church can just be self-affirmation. It can be self-aggrandizement. People are going to affirm me. We can be just overrun with these kind of sin sicknesses in our lives if we're not careful. The f foundational, fundamental remedy to this is what Romans chapter 8 tells us to do. The first thing he says is remember, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. An old pastor friend of mine, Mark Webb from Mississippi, used to say, when you go out into the world as a Christian, remember who you are. Live in remembrance of who you are. Brothers and sisters, we are those who have been joined to Christ because of Christ. The key to a Christ-centered marriage is Christ at the center of our marriage. That sounds so obvious. I was just reading some letters from the hymn writer John Newton who wrote to a younger man. And he said, you know, you must have these certain qualities in your life. And I, he underlined a portion that said, it's very easy to acknowledge these things in your mind. But what a blessing when you put them into practice in action in your life. It's so easy to acknowledge these things with our mind. But we must seek to live them out. The reality is that the book of Romans tells us again and again and again that we are to be those who live as if God has in fact redeemed us. The truth is that God has designed marriage to reflect his love for his bride, his redeemed bride. He is the bridegroom who is to one day, as Ephesians 5 says, present her back to himself without spot or blemish or any problem. That's what we want for our spouses. It's what we want for our church family. It's what Jesus wants for us in our marriages and in our church families. And so friends, we're just scratching the surface this morning about the truth of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because there's a reason there's no condemnation. Because he has come into this world willingly, eager to die for his bride, to lay down his life for her, having lived in a perfect way that she should have lived, and instead he did it for her. And then all of the debt that she incurred by not living that way, he would go to the cross, that cursed tree, to hang in the place of a sinful husband like me, so that he could redeem his bride. And that one day indeed she will be spotless and without blemish or any such thing. And spend an eternity of joy making much of the Lord Jesus himself. That is the gospel, friends. That's what God calls us to submit to and the way God calls us to live. And where we see that truth reflected in our marriage. Where sin is dealt with because we love one another enough to fight against its awful consequences in our lives. And that's what the church does. And that's where the church displays the beauty of Christ in Bev and Grant's marriage and indeed in the lives of God's people together. Let's pray together and ask God that he would make these obvious truths very real to us. Father, there is a danger of things that are so obvious to us. It's that we forget to put them into practice daily. Grant and I talk all the time that we can say we love our wives, but we must show our wives that we love them. And we must show the Lord Jesus Christ that our confession is real, that our profession is a possession, that we do love the one that we claim to love. Our Lord Jesus tells us that if we love him, we'll keep his commandments. And if we love our spouses, we will keep his command to love our spouses as Christ has loved his church. And dear God, we are thankful for the gospel this day. We're thankful that you have indeed broken the power of our sin that has been canceled. We pray, dear God, that the 
horrendous effect of sin, the devastating, brutal effect of sin, will I pray, dear God, be continually washed away from our, our Christian and our indeed our Christian married lives. Help us, Heavenly Father, to be those people who reflect your care for us, particularly in this most solemn of unions, in this most precious of relationships, our marriage relationships. I thank you for them. I thank you for the folks in our church family who are married for many, many years, whether it is 60 years or 60 minutes, dear God. We're grateful, dear God, that you promise, as Grant has already reminded us, he who's begun a good work in us will bring it to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Make that so, I pray, Heavenly Father, where you promise to do it, which is in an eternal communion with you. Would you grant us grace that our marriages will reflect just that. Thank you for our time in the word, our time in the song, our time in testimony, our time, dear God, in worshiping and honoring you. Grant us grace throughout our day, we humbly ask.